India embarked on making a fighter jet, the light combat aircraft or the Tejas, which got its final operational clearance very recently. I have with me Dr. K. Vijay Raghavan, who is the principal scientific advisor to the government of India. And Dr. Vijay Raghavan took a flight on the Tejas very recently at Bangalore. Uh, Dr. Vijay Raghavan, what was your experience when you flew in India's Tejas? Um, it was, as I like to say, a incredible experience, a mind-blowing experience, though it was a bit difficult on the gut. I get car sick easily, but fortunately nothing happened to me, even under 3G experience. And, and what was it like to get into the cockpit of a fighter jet? You come from an Air Force background, but had... Before this, had you ever flown in a fighter jet? No, I have never flown in a fighter jet. I have had the experience of sitting in fighter jets when I was a kid at exhibitions, but I've never flown in one. And w what was your experience when you when you were entering the jet, when you sat down, when you took off? Give us give us what you felt while you were there. Then we'll come to the technology bit. You know, the interesting thing is many people have asked whether I was worried or nervous or scared. None of that, for two reasons. One is, you know, when any aircraft goes through a process of testing, certification, trial by various pilots, you, you, you know that you're in safe hands. But I didn't even think of that because the people who were there around me at that time were so clearly professional and extraordinary when they, you know, suited me up um, when they took me, when they explained all the details of the aircraft and the controls, it was a very thorough professional beat, uh, briefing. You know, that's, that's pretty incredible. And what was it like to go in and do the maneuvers in the air? Well, that was actually quite fascinating. Not only did I sit in the rear cockpit and fly, but I was given the controls at least two or three times. Our flight took longer than expected because other aircraft were taking off. And so we had more time. And it was incredible to get a feel of how the aircraft responds to control and being able to handle the controls myself. It was a terrific feeling. Were you scared of taking control? You know, I was amazed at the way it responded. And, you know, I, of course the pilot is there to take charge. But my nervousness was, you know, uh, should I, was I actually doing everything? I had no training in flying whatsoever. So it was uh, with some trepidation, but also fantastic excitement. Uh, you were director of a lab in Bangalore. and So you got a different perspective of Bangalore from the air? Very much. I mean, the perspective from below, looking up, I mean, our labs are close to Yelahanka. And as I said, you know, my father was in the Air Force. So I've seen aircraft taking off and flying all the time. This perspective was very different. I intended to take a look at our laboratories while taking off next door from Yalanka, but you know, within a second we passed the labs and we had gone over to the HAL airfield at the other end of town. So much of what I saw from about Bangalore was South Bangalore and not North Bangalore. And then we went towards Salem and came back. What was striking about North Bangalore was on from the air, how much it's changed over the last 20 years but also how little tree cover there is in that area. So it highlighted the importance while we grow of paying attention to our environment also. And let's talk about the technology of Tejas. Uh, the light combat aircraft has taken several years, if not decades, to get, get going. Uh, it's considered a three and a half, four generation plane. Uh, as the principal scientific advisor to the government, do you think it's a state of the art 21st century plane which India should be proud of? Absolutely. People, you know, look at these things in very um, myopic and blinkered terms. Uh, they ask for a certain magic in that you want an aircraft of this kind in no time at all. But remember, aircrafts of this kind, which can maneuver, go at such speeds, are intrinsically extraordinarily unstable. The stability in older aircrafts required 
pilot response, which at these speeds today and the kind of maneuverability today, pilot response times are very, very long compared to the responses needed. So this requires state-of-the-art control systems, not only to be designed, but to be made and then to be implemented on the aircraft. This is non-trivial. It has to be done, response has to be in fraction of a second. When a novice like me turns the aircraft and it goes and does all sorts of things, it has to be stable. That is really world-class, high-quality design. That takes time and it takes, you know, time to do it on your own. Having done that, remember that we're doing that in a situation where the world is also dynamically changing constantly. So you have to do that and be competitive when it's done. And the aircraft today is competitive. And now having done this, it has to be market ready. With its introduction into the Air Force, its market possibilities open up. And finally, this opens up an enormous possibility for the next generation aircrafts to be made by partnership with DRDO and other agencies in a manner which this baseline information can be used at the next level. Can you compare for me the development time? Because many people say it has taken almost 20 years in the making, which is, so it's old and obsolete. And the 21st century, we are getting a plane which was designed actually in the 20th century. That is a wrong uh, perception stemming from a wrong way of analysis. It's not about how long something takes. Remember that a significant part of the time is involved in getting the paperwork done, putting the teams in ready, working the, getting the design organization structure ready. But more fundamentally, time should be looked at what is comparable for other such aircraft elsewhere in the world. And this is no different. It may be a few years off, but it's not decades off by any means. Such aircraft take time to make uh, of uh, quality. What we need is not a you know, look and analysis of the time. What we need is now the self-confidence to parallel process and have multiple similar kinds of projects going on in parallel. As a country this size, we cannot afford to have projects going on in a linear manner. And this parallel processing capability exists now, and we must embark on that. So AMCA would come earlier? I think we're going to see a partnership between DRDO with our industry, with our services in a manner where things will happen at high speed if we as citizens, as scientists, encourage these kinds of technology development synergies. Uh, you are probably the only civilian secretary who has flown in the Tejas, the real uh, made in India effort, indigenous fighter plane. Uh, the only other person who has flown is uh, Dr. Christopher as chairman of DRDO. Uh, can you tell the people of India that the, the plane which you flew in is state of the art and something which Indians should be proud of? You know, I not only was at the Tejas, but I had the opportunity at the Aero show to look at the details of other aircraft on display there. You know, the latest ones from elsewhere in the world, those which are used by the Indian Air Force and so on. The kinds of systems response and checks which go before takeoff in the Tejas are absolutely world class. And this is not an aircraft which we should be ashamed of. Quite the opposite, we should be very proud of. It sends an incredible message of how partnerships in our system can develop such aircraft. And as I said, we should now parallel process to ensure that we have many more of these kinds of achievements. So great experience flying, Tejas? Great is a mild word. It is absolutely, you know, something which I'll never forget. So, so that was Dr. Vijay Raghavan telling us that it was a terrific experience to fly in the Tejas the only fighter plane India has made in many, many decades. The last one we made was Marut, which was way back. And the future ones could come faster. In New Delhi, Palav Bagla.